We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, as we send abundant salutations upon his beloved Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Islim and Kathir. Thereafter, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us all to witness another Jum'ah. فَاللَّهُمَّ لَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَلَكَ الشُّكْرُ فِي كُلِّ وَقْتٍ وَفِي كُلِّ حين. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, almost in every khutbah, whether it is the Jum'ah khutbah, or the Eid khutbah, or the marriage ceremony khutbah, we begin by reciting three specific verses. Three verses which revolve around one specific message for the believers, and that is, Ittaqullah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this advice, my brothers and sisters, is the best of advices for any time, period, for any situation. And it is the advice not only given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather given by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also, where he said, when advising the companions, Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt. Fear Allah wherever you may be. My brothers and sisters, indeed taqwa, God consciousness, it is the savior for a person in this life and in the next. It guarantees a person contentment in this temporary life regardless of his or her situation. And it guarantees success and ultimate happiness in the next life. So I firstly advise myself and then you all to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and implement the concept of taqwa in all aspects of life. Allahumma ja'alna min al muttaqina ya rabbal alameen. Ameen. Now my brothers and sisters in Islam to proceed. It has been narrated on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu. May Allah ta'ala be pleased with him. That when those that migrated across the sea came back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked them, أَلَا تُحَدِّثُونِي بِعَجَائِ بِمَا رَأَيْتُمْ بِأَرْضِ الْحَبَشَةِ don't you, why don't you tell me of the strangest of things that you saw in the land of Abyssinia? Some young men among them, they said, Ya Rasulullah, yes, O Rasulullah, while we were sitting, one of the elderly nuns came past carrying a vessel of water on her head. She passed by some of their youth, one of whom placed his hand between her shoulders and pushed her. She fell on her knees and her vessel broke. When she stood up, she turned to him and said, سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُ يَا غُدَرْ إِذَا وَضَعَ اللَّهُ الْكُرْسِيَّ وَجَمَعَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ وَتَكَلَّمَتِ الْأَيْدِي وَالْأَرْجُلُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُ كَيْفَ أَمْرِي وَأَمْرُكَ عِنْدَهُ غَدًا You will come to know, O traitor, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets up the footstool and gathers the first and the last and the hands and the feet speak of what they used to earn, you will come to know your case and my case in his presence. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa when he heard this, he said, Sadaqat, Sadaqat. She spoke the truth, she spoke the truth. كَيْفَ يُقَدِّسُ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً لَا يُؤْخَذُ لِضَعِيفِهِمْ مِنْ شَدِيدِهِمْ How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify any people of sin when they do not support, when they transgress and do not support their weak from their strong? O servants of Allah, the topic of today's khutbah is regarding a grave sin, a dangerous characteristic. It burns away all the good deeds one does and only brings in the wrath and curse of Allah Azza wa Jal. It creates animosity and hatred and is a reason for breaking the tie of kinship and makes a person who possesses such a characteristic live a life of misery, stress and darkness. And what is this characteristic, my brothers and sisters? It is a zulm, it is oppression. Yes, oppression, my brothers and sisters, that which only leads to destruction in this dunya, in this life and in the akhirah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when we address this topic, it is important, important for us to firstly set down a foundation, for us to discuss this topic in further detail. And that is how the concept of zulm, how the concept of oppression has been defined according to our Islamic teachings. When we look through the texts and speeches of our pious predecessors, we find that zulm, oppression has been defined in many ways. However, from the most concise of definition for it is as follows وَهُوَ مُجَاوَزَةُ الْحُدُودِ الَّتِي شَرَعَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It is to transgress and go beyond the limitations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated and set. And this definition is very important for us to reflect on as it does not restrict to what we many or many of us may picture the concept of oppression to be. It is an all-inclusive definition which includes all types of injustices that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
No, my brothers and sisters, due to the effects and the harms of dhulm, oppression, and the various types of evil that stems from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it haram, impermissible for it to take place between his servants. And as he has made it impermissible upon his slaves, he has also made haram upon himself, Jalla Jalalu, to ever oppress his creation. It has been narrated in a hadith of Qudsi from Allah Azza wa Jal himself where he says, Ya ibadi, O oh my servants, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. I have prohibited myself injustice. Wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama and have made oppression unlawful for you. Fala tadhalamu. So do not oppress one another. And know my brothers and sisters, it was not made prohibited except because of the after effects it has on nations and societies. And when we look back in history, when we look at those nations that came before us, we find wherever there was any sort of oppression taking place amongst a nation, it was the very reason for the destruction of that nation. It was a reason for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to befall such a nation sooner rather than later. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Hud, وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةِ إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ such is the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he seizes the population of towns whilst they are doing wrong, whilst they are oppressing, whilst they are causing injustices. Verily, his punishment is painful and severe. Throughout the Quran, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared his resentment towards those that oppress and how distant they are from guidance of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, my brothers and sisters, Due to their actions, they are deprived from any sort of success in this life and in the next. And such is their position in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he associates the oppressors with those that have disbelieved to display to us the consequences of possessing such characteristics. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Nisa, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَظَلَمُوا لَمْ يَكُنِ اللَّهُ لِيَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ وَلَا لِيَهْدِيَهُمْ إِلَّا طَرِيقٌ طريقة إلا طريقة جهنم خالدين فيها أبدا وكان ذلك على الله يسيرا. Indeed, those who disbelieve and commit wrong or commit injustices or oppress, never will Allah subhanahu wa taala forgive them, nor will He guide them to the path except the path of the hellfire. They will abide therein forever, and that for Allah subhanahu wa taala is always easy. Respected brothers and sisters, one should never assume that the oppression caused towards a fellow brother or sister through whatever means it may be that such oppression and injustices will go uncalled for. That such injustices will be brushed under the carpet with no accountability. Rather, my brothers and sisters, there will come a day where the oppressor and the oppressed both will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the courtyard of divine justice where so that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, can give back the rights to the oppressed. That day in the courtyard of justice, there will be no medium, no, no one to help the oppressor, no bribe given, no false testimonies given. All will be revealed until even the body parts, the limbs of the oppressors will start to witness against the actions he or she did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, Allahu yahkumu baynakum yawm al-qiyamah, fi ma kuntum fihi takhtalifun. That Allah will judge between you on the day of resurrection about that wherein you used to differ. And he also states, That day we will seal over their mouths and their hands will speak to us and their feet will testify about what they used to earn. Subhanallah, such is the state of a person on the day of judgment, my dear brothers and sisters. The Prophet sallallahu also told us in a hadith collected by Imam Muslim Such will be the state on the day of judgment that the rights will be returned to those whom they are due to. So much so that even a hornless sheep will take back its rights by punishing the horned sheep which broke its horn, subhanAllah. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Indeed, oppression is prohibited in anything and everything. We may think that oppression is restricted to human beings, but in reality, even those beings that have no accountability on the day of judgment, if they are not treated in the right manner, if they are oppressed, we will be questioned for that. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, 
He says, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ الْعَدْلُ أَمْرًا وَاجِبًا فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَعَلَى كُلِّ أَحَدٍ وَالظُّلْمُ مُحَرَّمًا فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَلِكُلِّ أَحَدٍ فَلَا يَحِلُّ ظُلْمُ أَحَدٍ أَصْرًا سَوَاءٌ كَانَ مُسْلِمًا أَوْ كَافِرًا أَوْ كَانَ ظَالِمًا And due to this, justice is a requirement for everything and everyone. And oppression is prohibited in everything and upon everyone, regardless if he or she is a Muslim, is a kafir, or even an oppressor. Injustice is never permitted. Then he, rahimahullah, he quoted the famous verse, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'a bil qist, wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu, i'adilu huwa aqrabu lil taqwa. O believers, stand firm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bear firm testimony. Do, you, do not let the hatred of a people lead you to injustice, lead you to oppression. That is closer and be just. I'adilu, be just. For indeed that is closer to taqwa, that is closer to God consciousness. And be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished a woman for oppressing a pet cat, an animal which has no accountability. What will be the situation of the one who oppresses his fellow brother or sister in humanity? It was narrated on the authority of Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a woman was punished due to a cat she had imprisoned until it died and she entered the hellfire. لا هي أطعمتها ولا سقتها إذ حبستها ولا هي تركتها تأكل من خشاش الأرض. She did not give it food or water while it was imprisoned, nor did she free it to eat from the insects of the earth. And in several verses throughout the Quran, dear brothers and sisters, Allah explains to us some of the severe punishments for the oppressors on the day of judgment. In Surah Ghafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that the oppressor will have the worst of homes and a curse from the Almighty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will befall this person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ الظَّالِمِينَ مَعْذِرَتُهُمْ وَلَهُمُ اللَّعْنَةِ وَلَهُمْ سُوءُ الدَّارِ That day, the day when the wrongdoers, those that used to oppress, cause injustices, their excuses will not benefit them. And they will have the curse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will have the worst of homes. In Surah Baqarah, Allah azza wa jal, he states, they will have no helpers on that day. All of those that allied with this person, all of those that sided with this person against the oppressed, they will be worried only for themselves. That the wrongdoers, those that oppressed, they will have no helpers on that day. And in Surah Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that such people will have a great sense of regret and will be full of grief. وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ وَأَسَرُّ النَّدَامَةَ لَمَّا رَأَوُ الْعَذَابِ وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْقِسْطِ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ If every wrongdoer, if every oppressor were to possess everything in the world, they would surely ransom themselves with it. They will hide their remorse and regret when they see the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will be judged in all fairness and none will be wronged. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I want you all to contemplate about the state of such a person. Just think, on that day when all of those in who this individual oppressed, they gather around this person, every individual asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his own rights. A person comes and grabs the oppressor by his hand. Another grabs him by his neck. Another complains, he stole from me from this dunya. He bullied me in the dunya. He made a mockery about me in the dunya. He oppressed my family in the dunya. He deprived me from going to the masjid in the dunya. Just imagine all of this is taking place in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. And this oppressor has no one to help him. No excuse to display. Then, all that will be going through his mind is Today every soul will be rewarded for what it has done. There is no injustice today. There is no oppression today. In that moment when this person will be humbled, all the pride and showing off he did in this dunya will be of no benefit. He will be ashamed of his hideous actions. Then he will remember the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherein he said, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ That do not ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware of the harm doers, 
the oppressors, those that were unjust and what they did, the actions that they did. He only delays them until the day of judgment when all the eyes will just stare. مُهْطِعِينَ مُقْنِعِي رُؤُوسِهِمْ لَا يَرْتَدُّ إِلَيْهِمْ طَرْفُهُمْ وَأَفْئِدَتُهُمْ هَوَاءٌ When they shall run with their necks outstretched and heads upright, their glances never return to themselves and their hearts are empty. And in that moment, dear brothers and sisters, that same individual who caused such corruption on the earth, when he will see that there is no one to aid him, he will call out, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, I have wrong, please give me another chance. فَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رَبَّنَا أَخِّلْنَا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ نُجِبْ دَعْوَتَكْ وَنَتَّبِعُ الرُّسُلِ So the one who used to oppress in this world will call out, O oh our Lord, Ya Allah, grant us respite. Delay us for a while and we will surely answer your call. We will surely follow the messengers. Then it will be said to them, أَوَلَمْ تَكُونُوا أَقْسَمْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ زَوَالِ did you not once swear that you would never cease? Did you not once promise that you will stop your injustices? Did you not once display to the world that yes, we are people of justice. We do not cause mischief, rather we are peacemakers. We are merely rectifiers. When they are told, do not spread corruption in the land, they reply, we are only peacemakers. Subhanallah. And now, where are the claims in front of Al-Jabbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did they think that they could get away with all of their corruption and oppression? Did they think that all the plans and plots they had to place harm against others, that nothing will be accounted for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forget about such actions. Never. وَقَدْ مَكَرُوا مَكْرَهُمْ وَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَكْرُهُمْ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَكْرُهُمْ لِتَزُولَ مِنْهُ الْجِبَالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, they plotted their plots. But their plots are known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though their plots were such as to move mountains. Do not think ever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break the promise he gave to his messengers. Mighty is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and most capable of revenge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from oppression. May Allah ta'ala uplift the injustice against all those being oppressed. Ameen. Now my brothers and sisters in Islam, when the ulama spoke about zulm, they categorized it into three forms, all of which are unlawful in Islam. However, no doubt that they are not all equal in sin. The highest degree of zulm is zulm al-abd nafsahu bil ishraq billah. When the person, he commits oppression against his own self by committing acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come in many forms, but undoubtedly the worst type of obedience is ashirku billah. To associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. And this type of zulm, dear brothers and sisters, this type of oppression is what Luqman alayhi salam warned his son against when giving him advice, as stated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِضُهُ يَا بُنَيْ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ And remember when Luqman alayhi salam said to his son, while advising him, O my dear son, never associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. For associating others with him is truly a great injustice, a great type of oppression. The second category of zulm, the second category of oppression, brothers and sisters, is zulm al-abd nafsahu bi ma'asiyatillah. Is when one oppresses himself by doing sinful actions. The more the person sins, the more he is transgressing and going beyond the limitations and boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for him. And thus, when analyzing the definition of zulm, as mentioned earlier, we find that the concept of sinning falls under the category, category of zulm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in the Quran, has described that those that sin and go beyond these boundaries, he has said, they are the people of oppression. And they are those that are oppressing themselves. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَن يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهِ And whoever transgresses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's limits has truly wronged his own soul. And the third category or type of zulm, my dear brothers 
and sisters in Islam is a zulmul abd li ghayrihi min al ibad. When a person commits injustices towards others, any kind of injustice that a person causes to another person is a form of zulm, is a form of oppression. And as fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, we all have rights upon one another. We must ensure to uphold the honor of our fellow brothers and sisters. Their honor, wealth, and blood should be saved from us and protected by us. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned us against certain actions which lead to oppression. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم أخ المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يخذله ولا يكذبه ولا يحقره التقوى ها هنا ويشير إلى صدره ثلاث مرات بحسب من الشر أن يحقر أخاه المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله وعرضه Do not envy one another and do not inflate prices for one another and do not hate one another and do not turn away from one another and do not undercut one another in trade but rather be slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and brothers amongst yourselves. A Muslim is a brother of a Muslim. He does not oppress him nor does he fail him nor does he lie to him nor does he hold him in contempt. Taqwa, God consciousness is right here and he pointed to his chest three times. It is evil enough for a man to hold his brother, Muslim brother, in contempt. The whole of a Muslim is sacred for another Muslim, his blood, his property and his honor. And some of the scholars, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, they added a fourth, fourth category of zulm. And that is zulmul abd li ghayrihi min al-khalq. And that is when a person he oppresses other beings, other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as animals. We mentioned before that a lady, she went, she was admitted to the hellfire for what reason? Because she oppressed an animal. And because of this, she was admitted into the hellfire. And this is a type of oppression. So this is the fourth category that some scholars have mentioned. But on the contrary, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when we talk about zulm, we have to understand the opposite of oppression is rahmah, is mercy. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in a hadith, he talked about a woman, Arya, woman who was an open sinner. She was feeling thirsty and she found a well. She went down to the well to have some water. When she came out, she found a panting dog, a dog that was feeling thirsty. And she gave it some water. And because of this justice and this mercy she showed towards this dog, what happened? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, دخلت الجنة. She entered Jannah. Subhanallah. And if this is happening because she showed mercy to an animal, what will happen when we show mercy to our fellow brothers and sisters in humanity? Do not ever forget that from the greatest characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-rahmah, is mercy. And from the greatest names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses is ar-rahman. Something that we call to every day in salah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-rahman ar-rahim. And his rahmah his mercy encompasses everything. And do not forget the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he said, Irham man fil ardi, irhamuka man fil sama. That show mercy and be kind and just towards those that are on the earth and those that are in the sky will show justice towards you. I.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show mercy towards you on the day of judgment when there will be no one to help. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distance us from all types of zulm. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-mu'minin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillahi wahdah wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'dah. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, no doubt that we are witnessing many injustices taking place in the world right now. Again, against our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, whether it be in India, in China, in Palestine, and many more countries. And yes, no doubt 
no doubt that it will make us feel upset. It will sadden us. But we must never lose, lose the optimism set forth and encouraged by our believer Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We must know that the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will never break to injustices and oppression. We are an optimistic nation. An ummah full of optimism. We believe in the divine, divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By Allah, brothers and sisters, whenever we feel down, whenever we feel disheartened about the situation of the ummah, think of the oppression and injustices that were done to the best of creation to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And remember how his patience during such difficult periods were rewarded with many victories and huge success. Remind yourselves of the incident when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Ta'if with the intention to call people to Tawheed, with the intention to call to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet he was chased out by a young group of people who pelted him with stones and such were his injuries. <coughs> and such were his injuries that he bled from head to toe. Such that blood was stuck to his sandals. Such oppression was done to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And in such a situation where he could have taken revenge, where the angels came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, give us permission. We will take these mountains and crush these people. What was his response? What was his response? La, no, bal arju an yukhrij Allah min aslabihim. Man ya'budu Allah, wa la yushriku bihi shay'ah. No. I hope that one day from these people will come out a people that will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not, they will not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was his wish, this was his dua and look at life now his dua was fulfilled my dear brothers and sisters. Such incidents my dear brothers and sisters it reminds us all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is true. It reminds us all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with the oppressed and his help is always near. And let us change our ways, my dear brothers and sisters, and become that optimistic ummah that once was. And let us hold to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, united as an ummah, a nation against all types of oppression. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على من أمركم الله بالصلاة عليه حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. اللهم ارفع الظلم عن كل مظلوم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تحرمنا من رحمتك يوم نلقاك يوم لا رحمة إلا رحمتك اللهم كن لأهل فلسطين عونا ونصيرا وبدل خوفهم أمنا اللهم اجعل لأهل فلسطين النصر والعزة والغلب والقوة والحيبة اللهم انصر أهل فلسطين وثبت أقدامهم اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى واجبر كسرهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين يا رب العالمين اللهم ارضى عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم بكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة